Okay, so we went through all of that discussion about um, the auto-ionization of water and how pH is the concentration of, um, well, pH is related to the concentration of hydronium ions. And then we ended up with that lovely logarithmic formula for pH. Okay, so we're going to look at how do we actually go about this in practice. It's one thing to know that pH equals minus log the concentration of hydronium ions, but what do we actually do? So let's have a look at what are some common pHs. So this, okay, pH is minus log the proton concentration. So a pH of 1 will actually be 10 to the power of 0, okay? 10 to the power of negative 1. These are all the values of how many hydronium ions there are. So if this is how many hydronium ions you've got. Look here, lots of noughts. There'll be 14 noughts and a 1. You'll be at pH 14. But if your um, hydronium ion concentration is like 1 mole per cubic decimeter, your pH is going to be like 0. And if you've got a 0, 0,1 um, molar solution of protons, your pH will be 1. So the different pHs like this, this is the colors that are on your universal indicator paper. That's why they colored like this. pH 7 is green, and this is a purpley blue at pH 14, and the really strong acids are red. Okay, So as you work in the strength of the acids and bases here, hydrochloric acid, which is in your stomach, is like a pH 1 or 2. Lemon juice is slightly less acidic. Wine is acidic. Tomatoes are acidic. Black coffee is acidic. Rain is acidic. Your spit, it says, is a little bit acidic. I'm not sure about that. Milk is close to neutral. I actually thought your saliva was slightly alkaline, so maybe this is wrong. Your blood and your tears are alkaline. Egg whites are alkaline. Seawater is alkaline. Baking powder, lime water, ammonia, bleach. When I say household bleach, this is chick. It's also a base. And finally, sodium hydroxide, which you'd find in your drain cleaner, has got a pH of 14. So acidic to basic. And then in the middle here is water and stuff like that at pH 7. So milk, I thought was maybe neutral. Okay. I didn't think saliva was acidic, but maybe I've messed my little thing up. But either way, acidic to basic. So now let's have a look at what are we going to do with this formula on our data sheet. Okay, first of all, this is what's on your data sheet. pH equals minus log the hydronium ion concentration or the proton concentration. So to reverse this, if you know the hydronium ion concentration, you have to go 10 to the power of negative pH. Okay, so remember, remember that this is in your data sheet and this is what you have to do to get the answer if you know the concentration of, of um, protons. So how would we calculate the pH of a strong acid? The first thing to do, write down the ionization react reaction, like hydrogen chloride gas plus water goes to a proton plus um, a chlorine ion. Then, because of polyprotic acids, okay, remember that if I say to you I've got one mole of hydrochloric acid, I will make one mole of protons. But if I tell you I've got one mole of sulfuric acid, okay, one mole of sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid's formula is H2SO4. So one mole of sulfuric acid is actually going to give you two moles of protons, okay? So you have to determine the mole ratio for this ionization reaction. That's why you write down the ionization reaction so that you can see the mole ratio. So like Hydrochloric acid and nitric acid are fine. It's um, one mole of acid gives you one mole of protons. But sulfuric acid, one mole of sulfuric acid is going to give you two moles of protons. And if you've got phosphoric acid, one mole of phosphoric acid is going to give you three moles of hydronium ions. Okay, so this is why we have this step because of polyprotic acids. So once you've got the ionization reaction, you figure out how many moles of ions you're going to produce. Then you work out the concentration in moles per cubic decimeter. And this is from whatever other information is in the question. Okay, so like they say, I put 10 grams of hydrogen, I dissolve 10 grams of hydrogen chloride in 100 moles of water. Then you're going to use that to find the concentration. And so this is your square brackets H3O+, plus. because remember the square brackets are always the concentration. Then you just plug it into the formula. Your pH is equal to minus log the proton concentration. So this is pretty straightforward. 
so long as you watch out for polyprotic acids. Now, it's a little bit more complicated if you want to find the pH of a base, okay? So now remember, pH is minus the log, the proton concentration, but a base is like sodium hydroxide. So then you're going to be like, dude, where are my, hydro uh, my protons coming from? I've got sodium ions and hydroxide ions. It's because it's in water, and water has an equilibrium constant. And so that's actually how we end up finding the pH of a base. So how do we do it? We write down the dissociation reaction for the base, determine the mole ratio of the base to the hydroxide ions. So this is like polyprotic acids as well. If you've got sodium hydroxide, there's one mole of sodium hydroxide gives you one mole of hydroxide ions. But if you've got magnesium hydroxide, there's two hydroxide ions coming out of that. So you've got to watch out for the mole ratio, okay? So then from that, you know how many hydroxide ions you've got from the dissociation reaction and the mole ratio. Then what you have to do is work out what its concentration is, like C equals N over V or C equals MM, M over MV, that sort of stuff. You determine the hydroxide ion concentration. Now, you have to turn this hydroxide ion concentration into a hydronium ion concentration. And you do that by using KW. Because Kw is always 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees, and they're not going to make it harder for you by changing the temperature. So then you have to have a look at, you know this, you know this, and your hydronium ion is the only concentration you don't know, and you do algebra, yes, and then you plug it into the formula, and there you have your pH of the base, using the ionization, auto-ionization of water as the basis for that. So let's have a look at a quick calculation of this one because the bases are more complicated than the acids. So if it says to you calculate the pH of a sodium hydroxide solution with a concentration of 0.5 moles per cubic decimeter. So sodium hydroxide is easy. Here's its dissociation reaction. One mole of sodium hydroxide is going to give you one sodium ion and one hydroxide ion. So the mole ratio is 1 is to 1. So this is easy. So the concentration of sodium hydroxide is half a mole per cubic decimeter, which means the hydroxide ion concentration is 1 to 1. It's the same, okay? So we have our 0.5 moles per cubic decimeter hydroxide ion concentration. Then we come to our Kw here, and Kw is the hydronium ion concentration multiplied by the hydroxide ion concentration, which gives you 10 to the negative 14. So we just substitute in here. We take this concentration, 0.5, Put it in there under the hydroxide ion okay and so now we've got h3o plus t concentration of h3o plus times a half gives you 10 to the negative 14 and then people algebra yes and you end up with a proton concentration of 2 times 10 to the negative 14 and then you just come to your formula ph equals minus log the proton concentration and then you type into your calculator minus log wada 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 Press the button and the answer will be a pH of 13.7. So it's actually not as hard as it looks so long as you remember you're dissolving something in water, water is an equilibrium reaction, and then you're fine. And that's the end of that very brief explanation.